of time. But thank you for this opportunity. Um, I will show you today an introduction. I only have an hour, which is which is uh, not a long time, but I will show you how to do a basic program on the DCS. So uh, what I have here at home in my uh, little room is I've got a, a portable FCS that's in a cabinet, and then also I do have a box. Now, plant in a box is something that we uh, that we develop in South Africa for our training. And um, it's actually working very well. So usually we will do the training on uh, on the engineering training on test function and do, go through the whole course. But at, at one point, some point in the training, we will then uh, let the guys practice a bit on a live system. So although it is a hardware simulation, as you can see here, um, it is actually the DCS doesn't know because it works with four all the transmitters and the valves and everything which is 40 20 milliamps so i do have some meters there connected to the bottom of it as well that you can uh, actually see all the instruments 40 20 milliamps specifically for a training purpose so what i'm going to do today is just uh, show you how how this plant in a box is working and we are going to program a whole plant in a box uh, the whole process uh, in this hour. It's actually so easy with your Kogawa. It can, the whole thing can be done, a small little program in one hour. Um, so the Yokogawa DCS is connected to a plant in a box in this case. So we've got our FCS there with obviously the digital and analog input and output parts. We also have the option to connect it to a live plant, which is also one of our training simulators. But then we've got a, a real pump and real flow and pressure transmitters and level transmitters some water in a tank there at the back, which you can't see properly. Um, but today I am going to do the simulation of that um, in the plant in a box. So I'm gonna use a cascade loop, a level flow cascade loop to accu accurately control the inflow into this top tank here. So we will have a reservoir and then we will have a pump, which, will, which we will be able to start and stop from our FCS which will pump the liquid through a flow transmitter, and then we will control a control valve from an analog output car. And that water or whatever you want it to be, let's say beer for this instance, uh, will be pumped into this tank here at the, at the top, which I call tank two or the top tank. We will have a level transmitter, and we are going to control that level with a level flow control loop. And obviously, if there's no outflow, it will just reach its point, and then it will stop uh, stop the inflow so I mean, we must also have some or other kind of outflow which i will take through this manual valve which is just a, a tap that can be opened or closed uh, more and then we also have the option from the fcs we are going to program that to uh, open a solenoid valve at the bottom which will then obviously through gravity feed it back into the reservoir and we also have a pump too which will quickly drain this this tank from us. Okay, so like I said, the outflow will either be through the valve, the pump, or the manual control valve. The DCS uses PID control settings. Um, I've already set up the PID. I know what, they, what the proportion of the integral and derivative needs to be to get a very fast control. So we'll have a look at that. And then um, we are going to obviously control the MV of the flow to control this valve, to control the inflow into tank two. We can also add in the uh, disturbance, which I'll show you later, uh, by opening this solenoid valve, which has got open and closed feedback. So I said I don't have a PowerPoint slide, so I basically have two slides. So let me just get to the next slide. Uh, that's, that, that is actually my, my PowerPoint presentation, but don't fear, I've got a whole live presentation as well which I'll go to uh, now. This is a little bit slow. I hope you guys can see it well. So what I do have here, let's just get there, close that one, close the reminder of this. Okay, so let's first look at the operation of, of our system. So I've got an already programmed operation here that I can show you that we'll first look at just to see what our aims are for this what our objectives are for, for this webinar. So obviously I've got a face plate that is pump number one. I've got a level controller. I've got a flow controller. 
And this is the solenoid valve at the bottom of the plant in a box, and this is pump two for draining it. Now here I've got a webcam onto my live plant in a box. So right now you can see that the pump is on, and there is pump number one indicated by an LED. Also, we can see that I've got level, uh, which is set to 50.0% right now. My set point, which is this one, is on 50%. And also my, uh, my level, my PV, is on 50% as well. Um, that I obtain by having an inflow to this tank number two. So you can see I also have some LEDs here on the plant in a box, um, indicating that it's on 50% right now. So pump number one is on, I've got some flow here, I've got the valve opening at a certain percentage, which is 60.8%. Uh, and then uh, I've got this solenoid valve here with a closed feedback and the open feedback. So right now the solenoid valve is closed and this pump is off. So I can start, for example, or open the solenoid valve by just applying this and you'll see that the closed feedback's no longer there and I've got open feedback now. And my DCS is compensating for that because I've got a bigger outflow now. I will obviously need more inflow to be able to, to maintain my level on 50%. So this is just the operation of it. If I go and I open or I start the pump, there you can see the pump is running. Obviously it will just quickly drain my, my tank because this is a very powerful pump. So this is what we are going to program today. Let me just get back to a normal state where we've got 50% flow. I will also just quickly show you, uh, show you um, uh, how to create a, a quick graphic and also some, uh, some trends as well, which we will discuss during the program. Okay, so just to show you my FCS as well. So I've got another webcam on my FCS, which is this one here. So there is my FCS. I've got some IO cards. This is actually a digital input card. This is a digital output card, analog input card, analog output card, which are wired to these uh, ribbon cables here. And these ribbon cables then go to the plant in a box to get the connection to all my transmitters. Uh, two CPUs. So this is an AAV 30D. D means it's a duplex system with two CPUs and two power supplies for redundancy and also redundant networking, which has been uh, done by the two switches here at the top. This is a portable system, so it's not the best switches, but it works for training. There's no problem there. So let me get back to my plant in the box. So we'll spend a lot of time once we've done the program by just operating this and making sure the whole program is working the way it is working right now. So for now, I'm gonna just go going to enlarge this uh, his. Uh, his is obviously a human interface station where we uh, do the programming. This is my engineering station. And we've got a program in Centum VP called System View. So this is my System View software. And this is where I'm going to do the programming. So right now, obviously, I've already written the program. So you could, you could see that it was working. But I'm going to start with a whole new program from scratch. So this one I called plant in a box. I've just done a trial run this morning that I called plant in a box four. So I'll do another one plant in a box five starting from scratch. So I'm gonna go to create new project. And yeah, it will take the, the Windows username, Tully, and let's put this in as you Java. And you have to put some project information in. If you do not do that, it will actually give you a warning. You have to put some project information in. So I'll just say this is a plant in a box exercise. And it's created by me. This will typically describe your plant, what, what your plant is doing. So let's say this is 2028, 20, 25. Yes. And I'm going to click on OK. So that will create my new project for me. And it's asking for a project name. So I'm just going to say plant box 5. 
This is the folder in which it is stored on the hard disk. Usually you can browse to another folder, but we wouldn't recommend it. Keep your Centum project under Centum VP Engineering BK project. Um, funny fact about this BK for backup, like I thought initially. This is actually the founder of Yokogawa, which is Kobaoshi. Uh, as initials that's in here. So you'll see there's a BKIH and there's a BK project and a BK this and a BK that. That, that refers to his initials. This is the comment. And you can even give it the alias of your project. Then in the operation screen, it'll, it'll actually give that alias name instead of, instead of the real name. So we're just going to leave it like this. Uh, there you've got an opportunity again to change your project information. Uh, a domain is an area in your plant, so my FCS and my his are situated in area number one or domain number one. You can change that. There's a couple of things here. I'm not going to go through all of that. Um, I'm happy with this, and I'm going to click on OK. So this will now create a new project called Plant in a Box 5 in my system view. It will give me some uh, information about CAMS, which is Consolidated Alarm Management Software, which is a very nice package that you can actually consolidate some of your alarms, um, do a lot of things with that. And I am happy with this. So it's, it's busy creating my new project and you should actually see a project called Plant in a Box 5 there. So if you take a look at all these icons, you'll see that these look like a hard disk. These are actually user-defined projects that can only be used for training and with system, with, with um, uh, test function. But that is my real project. That is the one connected to the FCS. So in your plant, you'll probably only have the one project, which is the one live in the FCS. And the others are user-defined projects. Now, there is a project attribution utility where you can swap these projects so that another one will be in your FCS. But for now, I'm just going to work on the hardest. And then later, we'll switch back to the one that I've already programmed once I'm done. So the wizard will now ask me to create a new FCS. So there's all the FCS is supported by our software. It's basically from the very first one, even more than 25 years back. And the one that I have is the AAV30D. And you'll find that on a nameplate below the FCS. So there's my AAV30D. It's basically a duplex field control unit uh, for field IO in a 19 inch rack mountable pump. So I'm going to select that. And then we get different types of databases depending on your license. So um, if you, for example, have a general purpose license, you are limited to 200 control drawings. Now, a control drawing is, is a sheet in which you can write a program. If we go further, like, for example, the extended type, now you've got an option to have more, more uh, drawings, but obviously the license is more expensive. Now, in this semi seminar or webinar, I'm going to use two drawings. So 200 will be more than enough. My domain is one, and my specific FCS that I've got here at, at my venue is uh, station number six. It's set up by the dip switches as station number six. Um, I'm not going to do module-based engineering, which is actually our new um, automation design suite engineering. I'll stick to the system view um, product. And then if we go here to the tabs constant, I can define my fast scan cycle. You, you actually have three scan cycles. So my fast scan can either be 200 or 500 milliseconds or any, any other value that you type in from 50 milliseconds in uh, steps of 10 milliseconds. So I'm just going to make it as fast as possible, which is 50. And let's also enable the medium scan period. Now, these things must be enabled beforehand. Um, if you do not enable them and you want to enable them later, it's going to require an offline download. Most of our stuff has been done online. But these two must be done offline initially, or even during a breakdown, you can change them. All right. Um, another thing that I'm going to talk about later is our options. Now, I've got a digital I.O. enhanced option that I can select, and that will actually give me more blocks. So let me add that. Um, anything else I'm not too worried about? I'm not going to concentrate on any of these. Uh, possibly the network. So automatically, our IP address of the FCS is set to whatever domain and station I've selected. We work in the 172.16 range, domain 1, station 6. Okay, and you can also use other control drawing builders, but I'm going to use ours to uh, set up the graphics. So I'm going to click on OK, and that will now create my FCS for me. 
So the wizard that is running is doing all kinds of things in the background. And uh, we've seen now the, the project was created and now it's creating the FCS according to what specifications I gave it in, in the windows that, that, that we saw. Okay, so I am now going to go and show you in my plant in a box, I've got a common section, I've got a batch section, and the FCS is already created. So there's a FCS 106, which is a wall. And in a project, you can have many FCS. So we've just created one. I'll, I'll stick to that one. And then as a bare minimum, you must also have a HIS created in your project. So I'm going to use PC and monitoring functions, which is just on a normal HIS. And you must also specify your domain and your station number here. So usually the engineering station is sitting at station number 64. But in my case, I'm going to use station 33 because that's actually the HIS that, that I have here, the station number 33. Um, I'm going to go here to network. Again, you'll see that the IP address is set automatically and I will click on OK. So that will create my HIS. So up to now, I've not done a lot. I've created a new project. The wizard took me through this initial steps of creating an FCS and creating a HIS. Now there, my whole project is now created. I've got one FCS, one HIS. We can have up to 64 stations. This is one station. There is another station in one domain and we can have up to 16 domains and we can have an overall total of 256 stations which can include ESAs, your operator stations, FCSs, field control stations, safety stations, uh, routers, um, bus converters, all kinds of things uh, that will act as stations. Um, so I'm going to go now and open the FCS and in here, you'll see that I've got configuration, which is a couple of things that I can configure station definition. But I'm going to go to my I.O. modules. I want to define my digital and analog cards now. So I will go right click, create new node. Now in your Kogawa, you have a 19 inch rack mount unit that can only take a certain amount of I.O. cards. Uh, depending on what you have, usually you've got the two CPUs and the two power supplies on the right hand side. It can also be a single power supply, single CPU. And then we've got up to eight I.O. cards that you can add. If you need more I.O. cards, obviously you're going to need more. You have to create another node, which is another unit that you will then create a node and put some uh, a network connection and then you can have more I.O. cards and we can have up to 15 of these nodes, 10 local, 5 remote. So I'm going to create a node and the first one will be node 1, so I'm just going to select the default. And my first node is now created. Uh, I can then go and create more nodes, but in this, I only need the one node in the seminar. So right click, create new, new. now I can go to I.O. module, so create new I.O. module. Now in Yokogawa, we've got categories. So in our analog input category, these are all the available analog cards that we have. So AAI 141S is a 16 channel current input card. Now my first card is a ADV 151, which is a digital input card. And we use that as a status input. I want to see the status of the transmitter or the limit switch that's connected to that card. So, and then I will get all these different cards. So the one that I have in my training simulator is a ADV-151E. It's a 32 channel sequence of event status input module. And automatically it puts it as slot number one, which is fine because that is where the card is located. And you can even have redundant IO if you select a duplicate next card. Then you must put two of the same cards next to one another with a dual front connector. And if the one fails, the other one will take over but I don't have that, so I'm just going to take it off. Um, you can also select, instead of just reading the cards every one second or every basic scan cycle, high-speed read will, will read the cards as quick as possible. So I'm going to select high-speed read, and do not just select high-speed read on all your I.O. modules. Just use it for your ones that you need fast. So I, I want fast feedback from my pumps and my solenoid valve, so I'm going to use high-speed read in this. So I'm happy with this. I'm going to click on OK. And there we can see in slot number one, there's ADV-151E card. I'm going to do the same with my digital output card, create new, IOM, status output in this case. 
And this, the one that I have is the ADV 551P, which is a 32 channel status output card. It already shows me slot number two. I cannot go to slot number one because it's already occupied. Um, I want high speed read back from that card as well, so I'll select that. And then I've got two more cards an analog input card, which is hard capable. So I'm going to go to the category hard compliant. And then I've got an AAI 143H, which is a 16 channel current input isolated hard compliant card. Let me select that one. That sits in slot number three. Analogs, I don't need high speed read, so it can update it every one second or every whatever you, you, you select it on your basic scan. And I'm going to click on OK. I'm happy with that. And then I will also have an analog output card. Hard capable. So IOM category is hard compliant. And it will be a AAI 543 in this case. 543, that's my IO card. And that sits in slot number four. Okay, so now the IO modules are configured. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add my tag names. I'm going to double click on my uh, status input card. And obviously, in your PNID drawing, it will tell you exactly which instrument is wired where. Um, I've got four switches and four push buttons that I'll just add on my first, well, they are wired to my first eight channels. So I'll just start with switch zero one. I'll just give it that tag name. And I'm going to copy this and paste it here. So this is switch zero two, zero three, oops. Zero three and switch zero four. Then I've got four push buttons. Push button zero one. Just copy that first. So push button zero one, push button zero two, push button zero three and push button zero four. Um, there is a way where you can actually export this into a CSV file and just update everything in Excel. If the person who's doing the tag names doesn't have access to sync and VP. So I'll show you on the digital output part. We'll do that there on the status output part. So I also have some feedbacks from my pumps and let me just get to my notes. So I've got on channel number 13, I've got pump one feedback. So this year is channel number 13. So this is an absolute address. Basically, percentage Z01 means node number one. Slot number one, this depends on the module, but it basically varies between uh, 4 to 20 milliamps and uh, hard signal on an analog card. In the digital, that will always be a one. And this is channel number 13. So you can either use the absolute address or you can use your tag name. I'm just going to say here, uh, this will be pump one feedback. And then on channel number 14, I've got pump two feedback. So these are the, the feedback signals from the pumps. And then on channel number 15, I will have uh, the open the open feedback from the valve. So this VLV002, open feedback. And here I've got VLV002, closed feedback. So these are my tag names for my digital input card. I will go and save this. Notice that they green, and then when it's saved, they are black. So if I add anything else here, it will be green, which means that is not been saved yet. I will delete that. I don't want that tag. And I will just make sure I've saved, and I will close this editor. Now I'll do the same for my digital outputs. Let's just add one tag. So I've got eight LEDs from LED 01 to LED 08. So I'm going to export this as a CSV to Excel. So let's go to external file, export, and let's just, I'm putting it in documents. Let's just say um, something like long in a box, digital out one. I've done this many times in my training. That's why I've got so many of them. So I'll just click on save. And this is now exported as a CSV in Excel. So I'll go to Excel. Now I'll go and open that specific one. So let's go to open. And then obviously I need um, CSV files, which will fall under all files. And I should have something like 
Um, oh, planting a box one. Yeah, this is the one that I just did. Planting a box the one. So I'll open that. There's basically the whole card has been exported. And the only thing I need to do is add the tag names up to LED eight. And then I also have some control signals on uh, channel number 11, which is this one here. I have my feedback or my control to pump one. So this will be pump one control. And then on channel 14, this one here, I've got pump two control. Two control. And on this channel 15, I've got valve 2 control. Valve two control. So now I've specified the control signals to my pumps and valves. I've specified the feedback signals. I'll just go here and save this. I'm happy to save this. Uh, yes. A little bit slow. And I will close this. I want to save it as an Excel file. So I'm going to go here now, file import, external file import. And I must make sure that I'm looking for a CSV file now. And I'll look for that one. Plant in the box D01. Okay. And it will tell me everything you've entered will be lost, which is fine. And there all my tags are being imported from Excel. So that's a neat little trick if you need somebody to do it for you. And they only have Excel, just give them the CSV files. Okay, so this is now green. I'm going to save it. And my outputs, digital outputs, are now saved. And I'm going to do the same with my analog inputs. I only have two. I've got a flow transmitter and a level transmitter. Um, now, in uh, Yokogawa, when you've got an analog signal, it will, be, it will fall under label. And you must start with percentage percentage. So this will be flow transmitter 001. If you do not start with percentage percentage, it will actually warn you. You cannot do that. It has to be a percentage percentage. Percentage percentage level transmitter 001. Okay, so I have now created my two analog inputs, which is the 4 to 20 milliamps from the flow transmitter and the 4 to 20 milliamps from my level transmitter. I will save this. And then I will go to my uh, analog output card, and I only have one control valve there. I called it VLV001. Again, percentage percentage in front. Otherwise, it won't accept it. So that's my analog output, 4 to 20 milliamp valve. And I will save that. So what we've done so far is we created the new project. Uh, we called it Planting a Box 5. The wizard created the FCS and the HIS. And then we added a node, and we also added our IO card. The next thing I'm going to do is to start with the program, which is really, really easy. I'm going to go to function block. And there you can see the 200 drawings that I specified. So if we go down here, up to drawing number 200. Like I said, I'm only going to use two control drawings. Um, if I can give you a tip, it's a good idea to add a comment to a drawing. Because later, if, you, if you're not sure which drawing you used for what, you can always have a look in the comments instead of opening each drawing. So I'll just go here, right click, go to properties, and then put the drawing comment in. in. I will call this something like uh, PID control. PID control, that will be my drawing comment. And I, I am going to use your Kogawa's drawing builder. Uh, so I'll click on OK, and you'll see there's your comment. So I know now that drawing is being used, and it's been used for PID control. So I will open this. And this is now my drawing editor. So in here, let's just add a comment for, for the future engineers to know what this is all about. So I'm just going to go and uh, drag an area like that for my comment. And we'll put something in like tank to level and flow control. Tank to level and oops, flow control. Obviously, we can change. The, the font, if we go here, I actually want Arial Black. There's Arial Narrow. Okay. 
There we go. Very old black. Okay. And let's make it nice and big. Let me six point. And also you can change the font color. So right now it's white. If you select it, it will always be green. And we can go and change the color. Um, yeah. We can make that red. Okay, so there is your, your comment of the control drawing. Now I'm going to start entering the blocks. Now, obviously, in any DCS, there are predefined blocks like PID blocks, and block, the ratio control, um, lots and lots and lots of different things, manual loaders, PDI blocks, etc. And that you'll find here. If you go there, you see it says function block. And then again, we've got some categories. Um, and also, you can select the name here. If you know part of the name, I know it's a PI something, PID or something. You just type in PI, click there, and it will show you all the blocks that start with a P and an I. So we've got PI in. So there's a PID block, or you can go to your categories, and this is under controllers. There's all my different types of PID blocks. So any one of the two, I'm selecting that. You can even change the appearance of that PID block. So let's just keep it a square, click on OK. And I'm going to place a block. Now, by placing that block, I actually then already have a face plate. I've got a tuning panel. I can define trends for that. It's very, very easy by just using the existing block. So let's say this is called level. That's my level controller. And I need another one. I'm just going to place another one here, and I'm going to call it flow. So there I'm done with my two PID blocks. Now I need to link them to my I.O. So I will go here again to link block. Click on OK, and I'll just place a block here. And now I have to enter the name of my tag that I've given in the analog or in the digital, uh, in, the, in the analog uh, input. So this will be, uh, this is my level, so it will be percentage, percentage, level transmitter 001. Now there's, there's a bit of danger by just typing it in like this. Because if you make a spelling mistake here, it's not going to link up with your real tag. Okay, so I'll show you now how to do it uh, differently. I'll just go here and uh, link that. So I click on this until it click once and it will become green. And double click on where it's supposed to go. These X's are connection points. You can use any of them. I'm just using the ones closest to each other. So that already knows the transmitter goes to the input of that block. If you wanted to go somewhere else, you can actually select that right-click terminal name, and there's all your terminal names. Um, there's some of your um, parameters, but obviously we actually wanted to go to input. So I'll place another link block here. And this time I'm going to copy it from my I.O. card, rather than remembering the name. So I'll go back to my I.O. card. It says here in node number one. And that is under analogs. That is my flow transmitter. So I'm going to use this. Control C. Close this. Go back to my control drawing. And this must now be flow transmitter. I'm just going to select that and paste it in here. Then I don't. I know I haven't made a mistake. It's exactly the same tag that I created. Um, I want. I want to place another link block. And this will now be my analog output. So let's go back to. Output, copy that one, close this, back to this one, and just paste it in here. So there's my valve. So now I can just wire everything. I'm going to select there, click, double click, click, double click. Depending on, on the way that you click, in other words, where's your starting point, where's your ending point, it'll know it needs to go to an input or to an output. Another thing that I want to do is just align these two. I'll select both of them, go here and say align top. If they are aligned, then I can maybe just move this one slightly up. That looks a lot better. And now I need to take the output of my level controller and put it into the external set point of my flow controller. For that, I'll use the wiring again. Click, double click, but this time it's going to say in, so I have to change it. Terminal name, um, set. And gentlemen, and possibly ladies, I'm not sure if there's ladies attending, I hope so. That is my PID program done. This will now control the level and the flow of my plant in the box. If you click on save, um, and you've got zero errors and zero warnings, then you know it's been saved. 
If I make a mistake somewhere, let's say this is valve two, it will also validate my input. So if I go and I say, it will tell me there's an error and it's not saving this. It will say target tag name VLV002 not found. Oh, okay, I made a mistake. This should have been VLV001. So let's change that back to VLV001 and let's save it. There we go. Now I've got zero errors and zero warnings. I can close this. So half of my program is done. Now I'm going to go to, uh, to the second drawing and I'm going to create my pumps and valves there. So I'll just right click again, put a comment in, and this I'll call something like pumps and valves. Okay, so let's open that drawing. And I want to put the same comment there, the same size. So as a matter of fact, I'll just go and copy the other one. Go there, copy this, close the specific one, and paste it here. And this I'm just going to call something like pumps and solenoid valves. So I'll go there, select this, pumps, solenoid. Okay, it's already centered, so it's fine. And now let's let's use a block that we use for a switch instrument. In other words, either a pump or a, a, a solenoid valve, something that's just open or closed or just on and off with some feedback. So the, the block that we use for that is under switch instruments. And there you can see there's actually quite a lot of blocks here. Um, the one that I am going to use is a SIO11. So that means switch instrument inputs, there's one input. That's your feedback signal. Outputs, there's one output. That's a control signal to your um, pump. You also get one for the solenoid valve, which is a SIO21, which means switch instrument inputs, two inputs, two feedbacks, open feedback and close feedback. Outputs, one, the control signal to that specific valve. I'm going to use the SIO11. Um, later, I'll talk about these SIO21 21s and 11 E's. So that's an extended block. I'll talk about them just now. So let's click on OK. So I'm going to place my block and this will be pump one. So the face plate will be called the name of the instrument, pump one. And then I'm going to use a link block again. And this time I'll find that link block in my digital input card. So we will call it uh, what I called it was pump one underscore feedback without the percentages because this is a digital signal and i'll place another link block and this will be the control signal to the pump or to the uh, contactor so this will be now pump one underscore control and let me link or wire them so click on that x double click on this one click on this one double click on that one move this one slightly down So, so there's actually three names that we need to take into account. The name of the face plate or the name of the instrument, the name of the thing that you're going to control is, is called pump one. There is a feedback from pump one that comes from the digital input card, which is called pump one feedback. And there is a control signal going to the contactor of the pump or to the relay or whatever you've got that is called pump one control. And this face plate, this switch instrument will control those two signals. If I don't get feedback within a predefined time, I'll get an alarm. I'll get an answer plus alarm telling me the pump is supposed to run, but I don't get feedback. So there's a problem. Okay, so let's also do pump number two. I'm just going to copy and paste it. Add this in here. So this will now be called pump two. This will be pump two feedback. You can also export this to HTML file or CSV and change it there, replace all of them at the same time. But to save time, I'm just going to do it like this. And we need another one for our solenoid valve. I'm going to place this again. The solenoid valve has actually got two inputs. So I'm going to use another block. I'm not going to use the SIO11. I'm going to use the SIO21 block, which is two inputs, one output. 
The moment I press enter, it's going to tell me you're going to lose your connections because it's a different type of block. Yes, I'm happy with that. So I will lose my wiring because it, it's not necessarily the same uh, pins that it's, that, it's, that it's available for different types of blocks. I need to change this now. To, now I need to remember what the feedback signal of that valve was, VLV002, open feedback. That is the name I've given the open feedback. And this will be VLV002 control, VLV002 underscore control. And I will now wire this. And I'm done. I'm done, but there's supposed to be two feedbacks, open feedback and closed feedback, but I'm done. So the way this works is the SIO21 block, well, you must tell it where the location of the open feedback is, and the closed feedback has to be wired to the next physical digital input. If you do wire them like that, you can use the SIO21 block and just for, for um, ease of operation, just enter the open feedback. It will automatically look for the close feedback on the next digital input. If you do not want to do that, if you, if you maybe have wired them on separate inputs, you must use the SIO21E block, the enhanced block. And for that, you have to have enabled it uh, initially, where I showed you how to do that. Okay, so I'm happy with this because my, my signals are wired consecutively. Let me just show you that. If I go to my node, and I go to... Uh, feedback. There you can see the open signal is on channel 15 and the closed feedback is actually in fact wired to the next channel which is channel 16. So I can use that block. The problem with using that block is maybe later channel 16 get damaged then you'll have to re uh, replace both inputs to, to different channels or connect them to different channels and change it here. Well, just change the tag name. Uh, if you do not want to do that, you'll have to use the SAIO21 email. Okay, so my programs are done. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to save this. Double defined tag name somewhere. There's that. Oh, this one here. You see, it also warns you of that. This is supposed to be VLV002. Okay, let's try again. So there we go. Nice thing about a live presentation is anything can go wrong. All right. So this is done. I've got zero errors and zero warnings, so I can close this. And now the next thing that I'm going to do, I can actually test this. So, so for me to be able to test this now on a live system, I have to do a couple of things. This is actually what we call my current project, the project inside the FCS right now. But I want this one to be the current project. So there is a tool called your project attribution utility where you can swap these projects. Like I say, usually in your plant, you'll only have one project anyway. For me to save time now, I'm not going to do it because it takes about five to six minutes to download to the FCS and to the HISAs. So I'm just going to tell you what to do. Usually what you will do in this case, so if that is not your current project, but this one is, you will go to your FCS, right-click on it, go to load, go to offline download. This is your very first initial download to the FCS. And then you'll click download and it will not be grayed out like mine because mine is a user defined project. Your current project will be able to download. Then it will take about five to six minutes, depending obviously on the size of your project. And then it will download to your FCS. So this project, which is exactly the same as what I've done now, is already there. And the next step, what you will do is you'll go to your his, right click, go to load, and you have to download all three of these steps. You have to be an engineering user and your equalization has to be set for this his. So I'm going to go then, then you can go download common section, uh, which will basically download all your stations in your project. The next one will be download to HIS. So that will then download the windows that you created to the HIS, which we haven't done yet. And then you will go to download tag list, which will then download the tag list from all the FCSs to all the HISs. So I am going to, to go and create a window now. Or oh, Before I do that, let me just test what we've done. So after you've downloaded and you go to name, you can actually now type in level, which is one of the face plates that I've created, the blocks that I've and there it is. So I can right click on this. I do have a tuning window here where I can set my high, high alarm, my process, high process, low, 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 velocity, deviation, set point, high, manipulated limits, 
PID settings. There's lots and lots of things that can be set here just because I've used that faceplate, that block. Okay, I can obviously also open my flow, which was the other one that I created. And then I've got level and flow. Um, I can change the modes of the blocks if I put this in manual. Yeah, and you, obviously you can put a reason. Um, stop. Whoa. Stop. Well, and all these reasons are, are being locked in the historical report. So now it's in manual, and now I have to actually open or close the valve manually. So if I go and I open it 100% now, I will have lots and lots of flow, and obviously my level will rise now. So I'm not controlling around my set point anymore, because this instrument is now in manual mode. Also notice on your primary instrument, there's an IMAP telling you my secondary is not listening to me anymore. Okay, so I can change the modes. Obviously, this needs to be in cascade for it to control around the level point. Now, the moment I put it in cascade, my eye man will disappear. So now I'm going to start controlling again. And look how aggressive it actually is. It's really, really closing fast because I've already set the PID settings for this according to the Ziegler and Nichols model. So if I go to flow, I open the tuning. I have determined that the proportional must be 64.4. according to the Ziegler and Nichols method, which is quite nice. You can see if I go and I make this, let's say, 20%, look how quick it reacts. It immediately closes this valve, but it doesn't overshoot at all. It's going to stop right there because its tuning parameters are correct. And there it stops, 100% on 20%. Very, very uh, accurate and fast. Okay, so I can also obviously open pump one. Pump one, and I can start and stop the pump. So if I put this off, I will not have any flow anymore. There you can see the feedback going down. So I do get close feedback, and I've lost my flow because the pump is not running. Okay, so instead of having all these face plates on that I have to pull up separately, I am now going to create a window where I can put all of them in. So I'll just right click here, go to uh, create new window. And I will call this window, okay, you must specify the template to use. I'll use an eight loop control group. I'm going to call it plant in a box minus control group. So that is my window name. And let's also create a graphic. Right click, create new, create new window. And this time I'm going to use a graphic. Graphic is basically a blank screen. You can put anything, not just faceplate. Uh, window name will be plant in a box minus graphic, for example. Right, and I'm going to open the control group. I already have a, a template with eight faceplates in it. There's the graphic editor, and there is my eight faceplates. So I'll right click on the first one, properties. And I'm going to put in the windforms control property page, and let me put in pump one because we need to start the pump initially. So I want that on the left hand side. Pump one. Again, it's maybe a good idea to rather copy and paste from your control drawing than just remembering the names. I just want to save a bit of time. Um, this one will be maybe the level controller. This one will be my flow controller. This time you use the tag names of the face plates, not your feedback or control signals. Okay, and this tag name will be my valve, my solenoid valve, 002, and the last one will be pump 2. Page, pump 2. And I'm done. So my window is created now. I will click on save. Can you see those little X's there that tells you this has not been saved yet? So if I click on save, it's now been saved. And let's quickly create a graphic as well. And maybe just before the graphic, let's go and test that window. Obviously, you have to go and download that window to your VIS. Um, so I'll go to um, plant in a box 
control group. If it was downloaded, it will be there. So there's, there, there they are now um, in one window. Okay, so let's go and create a graphic. I'm going to create a very simple graphic because we're running out of time. Yeah, so I've got a blank screen here. At the top, we've got our uh, commands, and then yes, our stencils with all kinds of library items that you can use. Yeah, I can pan and zoom, and yeah, I've got some layers as well that I can use. So let's start by just putting a, a comment in again. Let's call this something like um, plant in a box graphic. Okay, I'm going to go and select this. Obviously, it needs to go bigger. Let's go to area of black here. Maybe maybe six points. A bit slow. There we go. And the color red. Now let's make it green. Okay, so there's maybe red is a better idea. Yeah, you can see that here. Okay, so I'm just going to use a tank because I want to show the level of the tank. This is the tank that you also use in the training. And I'm going to just drag it a bit bigger. Maybe something like that. And obviously, we've got lots of uh, valves that you can use from the stencil. We've got some switches, some pumps. These are just the standard items. Pipes. You get a lot of fancy pipes with joints and stuff. And usually, a lot of people spend a lot of time in the piping. Uh, you can do it. You've got some nice arrows that will actually point the direction in which the flow is and all kinds of things. I'm just going to go and use a basic polyline for a tank. So I'm just going to go here, and uh, you, if I hold down shift while I'm dragging, it's actually only rotating 45 degrees, so the line is nice and straight. So I'm going to click again and double click here, and then my line is done. So I'll go to its properties. I will go to line, and then let's make the thickness maybe 10, just to make a nice uh, defined line. And let's make the color maybe silver, and we go to the round corner and make it medium. That's good enough. Let's add one more pipe at the bottom. Again, use a polyline. Um, while you're holding shift, just drag it down. Click, drag, double click. And then properties again. Line, thin. You can also set this as a template so you don't have to go and do this all the time. Okay, so there's my pipes. Now I'm going to put in a transmitter, just a little circle, nothing fancy. So let's just use a circle there, like that. Okay, and I will add a text next to it, just saying this is a flow transmitter. Let's just say 50001. Select that. Area black. Black. Make it something like maybe twenty six. Yeah, that's good. Make it small like this. It's not good. I switch on my caps lock. Let's just go back there. Flow transmitter zero one. And what I want to do is just align these two. So go to alignment and let's say map. So it's nice and centered. And I'm going to copy these two for the level transmitter as well. So control C, control V. Let's add them there. And we'll do the same. I'm just going to say this is a level transmitter. So go to that to edit. Change that F to a L. Level transmitter. Last thing I'm going to do, obviously, I have to link my tag. Let me first do that. Right click, go to properties, generic name binding, define local bindings, and I will say the upper value. I didn't define any um, um, scaled units, I'll just use the percentages. The lower unit will be zero. 
then the tag will be level because I want to show the level of the tank. And the item will be the PV. So now my tank will actually display the level in this nice uh, blue bar. Okay, let's put a touch target around these to call up face plates. So I'm going to go here to buttons and I'll use touch target or just drag it here. What a touch target does is whenever you move your mouse over it, changes to a pointing finger and when you click on it, something will happen. You have to define what must happen. Now I'll go to function. I will go to all window and I need a face plate. Face plate. And this will be my flow transmitter. So it will be flow. You can even specify where that flow transmitter must be displayed once you pull it up. So I'll just say, let, let us make it something like, I've actually predefined it here somewhere. Um, let's start, put it on 1,500 pixels to the right and from the top 350. And I will click on close. And I'm going to do the same with my level transmitter. So I create another touch target here. Center it nicely over my uh, circle. Right click properties. This is now my level transmitter. Function or window. I need a face plate. And the parameter must be level. And I'm going to put it just to the left of my um, uh, flow face plate. So this will be 1, 3, 4, 5. Obviously, you have to play with this until we get the position right. I've already done that. Okay, so let's say that's my graphic. And I will go to file and save it. So basically the hour is done and I am done. I have now programmed this whole plant, including a graphic, including a control window. Obviously it's a very small uh, plant, but it's done. I can now go and actually test it. So if I go here, my overview window, you'll see there's a plant in a box control group with my controls. And then I also have my plant in a box graphic here with my graphic. So there's my graphic, there's the level of my tank. And I said, if I double click on the flow transmitter, it will put my flow face plate there, double click here. There's my level face plate. Let us raise the level and see what happens. I'm gonna to go to 80%. And there my plant is working. I can see my level is rising as well, rising. And the last thing I can probably do is just show you that on the web camera okay and there you can see it is actually rising as we control it um, let us just for one last bit let's add a couple of trends which is also very quick to do i think i still have time for that so i'll go back here just maximize this and i want to close all these windows so i'll just go to close all and let's go back here and create a trend. So if you go to configuration of your his, you'll see there's all your trends. I've got eight blocks here, but you can go up to 50. You can add more, five zero blocks. Each of these, I've got 16 groups and each group can contain up to 16 pins. Uh, eight of them defined by the engineer and eight of them defined by the operator. So I'm gonna say this is a continuous and rotary type trend. Uh, I want to update it every one second, and I want a historical log a data store, long-term data store of 10 days. That will take up 848 megabytes on my hard disk. Okay, so that is done. Uh, now I can double click on this, and I'm just gonna add the pins according to uh, what I want. So let's just start with something like the level, and I want to display the set point initially, and I also want to display the level PV, and I want to display the flow set value. I want to display the flow PV and maybe the MV, which is the valve opening. And I'm done. Okay, so again, you will download this to your his. And once it's done, you can pull it up by using TG train group block one, group one. And there's my trend. So everything I've done will be trended now. Um, obviously this was already defined, that's why you can see. So if I go to my level set value, double click on it and I change it to let's say 40%, it should then start to drop. So I've shown you the set point, there's the PV, so whatever you select there will be brighter. 
And as you can see, it's very, very aggressive. Running, going down to my set point. And there, when it reaches the set point, it will stabilize up because my flow is now being controlled. I have a level. Okay, I think from my side, that is basically what I wanted to show you. Let me minimize this. Minimize this.